Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about Give It To Me, which is personally one of my favorite diss tracks. I mentioned a little while ago that I wanted to do a whole diss track video, but it's become pretty clear to me that in order to unpack a lot of these songs properly, that it's better that they have their own video, so that is what we'll do instead. And Give It To Me was trending just a little while ago all over TikTok, and so was the promiscuous mashup. And personally, I've been having a little bit of a Timbaland renaissance and listening to a lot of his older music the past couple weeks, so I thought now would be a great time to talk about Give It To Me. And Give It To Me is just iconic. While it's not the most scathing diss track out there, I think the fact that it easily doubles as a club banger helped it get to be as big as it was. And that's what Timbaland said that he would do whenever he was looking to produce a new song. He would spend some time at the club and then go back to the studio. That way he knew what people were listening to and what they were enjoying, but then he could still go and put his own fresh spin on it. Also, I love the fact that three separate artists address their beefs on one song, so then Give It To Me is really like three diss tracks in one. A symbol. <laughs> So the way I'm going to break this down is by talking individually about Justin's beef, Timbaland's beef, and Nelly's beef, but first I do want to give some overall context and background to the song itself. Give It To Me came out in 2007 as the lead single on Timbaland's album Shock Value. By this time, he'd already produced for both Nelly and Justin. With Nelly, Timbaland helped produce her album Loose, which had hits like Promiscuous, Man Eater, and Say It Right. With Justin Timbaland helped produce Justified, as well as his following album, Future Sex Love Sounds. At the time, their most popular collaborations were Cry Me a River and Sexy Back. It was well known that Timbaland worked with Nelly and Justin and was kind of a dynamic duo with both of them individually. Timbaland was one of the top producers in the game and also worked with artists like M.I.A., One Republic, Jay-Z, and Rihanna. Justin, Nelly, and Timbaland all co-wrote their verses on Give It To Me. Of course, Timbaland produced it along with his protege, Danger. Danger also helped Timbaland produce on Loose and on Future Sex Love Sounds. So when it came time to address the criticisms of their songs and their successes, it only made sense that they all teamed back up. In his verse, Timbaland addressed his fellow producer Scott Storch. They both produced on Justin's 2002 album Justified, along with The Neptunes, The Underdogs, and Brian McKnight. Scott and Timbaland co-wrote Cry Me a River, which is still one of Justin's most popular songs. Timbaland was credited as the only producer, but Storch says he helped produce the song too. Scott Storch was also a prominent producer at the time, having produced hits like Naughty Girl, Into Club, Lean Back, and Let Me Love You. In his verse, Timbaland disses Scott saying, I get half a mil for my beats, you get a couple grand, never gonna see the day that I ain't got the upper hand. I'm respected from California A way down to Japan, I'm a real producer and you just a piano man. Your songs don't top the charts, I heard them, I'm not a fan of niggas talking greasy, I'm the one that gave them they chance. Somebody need to tell them that they can't do it like I can. A couple weeks later, Scott Storch released his own diss track called Built Like That. One of his verses about Timbaland reads, Your boy Danger gotta hate you with a passion, man. He makes hits while you taking all the credit. Damn, I know the feeling, I'm with you. Won't you tell them how I made Cry Me a River? According to Storch, Timbaland approached him to work on two songs on Justified and framed it as a 50-50 collaboration. Storch claims he came up with the bridge and the melody on Cry Me a River, but he's only credited for key playing and composing, which makes Tim calling him a piano man even more of an insult. I did notice that Wikipedia credits him as a producer on Cry Me a River, so I'm not sure when that was changed. Scott told MTV about his diss track. I just felt like enough was enough. I heard the song playing and I knew it was about me. People were calling me saying, this dude is taking shots at you and then interviews popped up. So enough was enough. I needed to defend myself like a man is supposed to do. I'm not gonna take it to the streets or hurt somebody or do any BS like that, but I just had to speak up. I'm not a rapper, but I wasn't about to have somebody else fight my battle for me. So I said, let me put this down. I've been making rap records long enough. I just got in the booth and spit what was on my mind. Scott also claimed that Timbaland took all the credit for another song they worked together on that was featured in an and one commercial. Though his reps initially denied it, Timbaland confirmed his Give It To Me verse was about Scott Storch. In a live performance of Give It To Me with Justin, Timbaland changed the lyrics in his verse to Scott Storch, I'm a real producer and you just a piano man. He also called Scott Storch a bitch. Storch believes that Timbaland was prompted to make the diss track after a rumor got back to him that Scott had been talking about him. But Scott still said that he felt like it wasn't a good enough reason to make a diss track. He said, I'm not taking away the fact that Timbaland has had a lot of hits and has done some fly shit in his career. Just keep my name out of your mouth and I'll do the same. It also seems like at some point they hashed this beef out because the two have been pictured together and they've even made some beats together on Instagram Live. 
In her verse on Give It To Me, Nelly Furtado addresses Fergie potentially taking a shot at her song Promiscuous. She also sings the chorus which ties the song together. Aside from producing Promiscuous, Timbaland and Danger helped write it. The song was critically acclaimed and went number one and earned Nelly a Grammy nomination. Justin Timberlake actually made a cameo in the music video. In her song Fergalicious, Fergie says, but I ain't promiscuous. The song came out just a couple months after Promiscuous and 2 was extremely popular. This is why some thought it was a diss at Nelly's song. On her album The Duchess, which contains Fergalicious, Fergie was accused of changing up her style to copy Nelly Furtado's. In her verse, Nelly says, I'm the type of girl that'll look you dead in the eye. I'm real as they come if you don't know why I'm fly. I've seen you try to switch it up, but girl, you ain't that dope. I'm the Wonder Woman, let me go get my rope. And she also says, You love my ass and my abs in the video called Promiscuous, my style is ridiculous. Nelly denied these lyrics were about Fergie, saying, I think Timbaland and I just got a little cheeky and we were like, let's do a song about how great we are. It's possible that Fergie wasn't talking about Nelly Furtado at all and was just addressing rumors about herself and Fergalicious. It's also possible that Fergalicious was recorded before Promiscuous was even released since they came out so close together. However, there was speculation that since both girls' labels were under Universal that Fergie could have heard the song before it was officially released. Apparently Promiscuous had been sent to Will I Am before it came out, so it was possible that Fergie heard it too. As for Fergie jacking Nelly's style, I found a forum from 2007 where people were saying that Nelly herself had copied Gwen Stefani's style. Fergie responded to Nelly's jab in her song with Daddy Yankee called Impacto. In it, Fergie says, I'm Fergalish as brothers want to get a taste, but they know I ain't promiscuous, the realest chick up in this. The ladies know the real from the fake. Got a problem, come say it to my face. Fergie Ferg, make an impact, I'ma pull your wig back. It seems that Nelly didn't respond, at least publicly after that. I saw in the form I mentioned earlier that the two ran into each other at a club but didn't settle their differences, but I didn't see that confirmed anywhere else. So the origins of this beef between the two ladies was a little bit murkier, but it became real once Nelly addressed Fergie and gave it to me. Maybe it's not really about Fergie, but it's pretty clear that it is, and I hate when artists diss someone and then they act like it's not about that person. Nelly has since said that she regrets airing out whatever tension she had with Fergie, so I guess this is a roundabout confirmation that her verse in Give It To Me was in fact aimed at her. Justin's verse was inspired by Prince's criticism of his song Sexy Back. Prince said at an Emmy's after party, For whoever is claiming that they are bringing Sexy back, Sexy never left. Timberlake's 2000 song, which was produced by Timbaland, was his first number one and won a Grammy for Best Dance Recording. Several publications, including Billboard, claimed Timberlake was indeed bringing Sexy back with the critically acclaimed Sensual Electro R&B song. At that year's Golden Globes, Justin accepted an award on Prince's behalf because he was stuck in traffic. Um, well, I guess Prince couldn't be here, so uh, <laughs> I'd like to accept this award on his behalf. And uh, thank you. There we go. This was a little over a month before Give It To Me dropped, so the negative feelings were likely still there. Timberlake addressed Prince in his Give It To Me verse saying, Could you speak up and stop mumbling? I don't think you came in clear. When you're sitting on the top, it's hard to hear you from way up here. Now I saw you trying to act cute on TV, just let me clear the air. We missed you on the charts last week, damn that's right you wasn't there. Now if sexy never left, then why is everybody on my shit? Don't hate on me just because you didn't come up with it. Justin was criticized for taking a swipe at an icon in black music and music in general, despite basing a lot of his artistry off the work of other black musicians. In addition, this was only a couple years after he left Janet Jackson out to dry after he accidentally exposed her during their Super Bowl performance. In their criticism of Justin's verse, Pop Dust said, Justin Timberlake's diss track is an extreme example of his cognitive dissonance, exemplifying the way his career was influenced profoundly by black culture, black artists, and black music, but he fails to acknowledge its impact. The situation is even more confusing when you remember that Justin paid tribute to Prince during his halftime show in 2018. This obviously upset Prince fans as he and Justin didn't like each other and they still didn't when Prince passed in 2016. For his part, Justin said that Prince's friend Questlove gave him his blessing to perform the tribute. Despite the drama that inspired it and the fallout that it caused, Give It To Me was a success. Selling 248,000 copies, the song had the second best first week digital sales at the time, just behind Sexy Back. The surge in sales is what helped Give It To Me soar from number 42 on the charts to number one. While some critics praised the song for having cheeky lyrics and catchy production, others felt it was repetitive and fell flat. Still, the reviews were mostly positive and some considered it the best song on shock value. 
I don't know if I'll personally go that far considering the way I are, Apologize and Bounce are also on this album. All Music said in their review of Give It To Me, it is immediate enough to connect on the first listen, while Tim also sneaks in enough subtle layers to make it increasingly insidious with each play. Give It To Me holds up and it still sounds current just like the rest of Timbaland's discography, honestly. It's fondly remembered as a standout from that era of mid-2000s music. This is in part evidenced by its viral run on TikTok that started a few months ago and seemed to just recently be ending. Give It To Me inspired a dance trend as well as another trend inspired by the movie Zoolander. It's been remixed and mashed up with several other songs like Promiscuous, which I mentioned earlier, as well as Coyla Ray's song Players. There are also several TikToks expressing nostalgia for this era of music in general where Timbaland was basically running music. This past November, Timbaland reflected on the song's 15th anniversary. He said, Timing is everything, but God gives us a sense of urgency and an overjoy that shines and people say, yo, you look different, you gotta glow. So sometimes that glow at that time is your moment, and I felt like when I made Give It To Me, it was at a time when I did Sexy Back, Promiscuous Girl, all those in a row, and it was like, it's like Barry Bonds hitting the baseball, hitting all those home runs. It's like you just know it's those moments and it comes in spurts and then it fades down, and I knew I had a run at that time, and when I did Give It To Me, I had the world open to listening to what Timbaland is bringing, what he wants to present. Though Timbaland had produced number ones for other artists, Give It To Me was his first number one as a lead artist, so the song is still special to him. He and Justin went on to collaborate on projects like Four Minutes, which is one of my all-time favorite songs, Carry Out, and Justin's 2013 album, The 2020 Experience. Nelly and Timbaland's music relationship took a brief pause due to the mental health issues Nelly faced while touring for Loose. She had a nervous breakdown on stage, and it caused her to take a break from music for a couple years. When she returned to music, she worked with Timbaland again and featured on his song, Morning After Dark. Despite all the drama that caused it, Give It To Me earned its place in pop culture history. It's hard to overlook the power of a producer making a diss song and having artists jump on it and address getting dissed for songs he produced. And not only did he produce both of those songs, he features on them too. I can't describe the genius of that. Like, there's, there's just so many layers. So yes, I just wanted to discuss another piece of music history with you guys. And that's why I really like sometimes when older songs trend on TikTok because you get to remember they exist and just how fun they are. And sometimes they have a whole backstory to it that you don't even remember about till the song comes upon your feet again. And if you are interested in hearing me talk about Timbaland's work with Aaliyah and a little bit of his work with Missy Elliott, I actually made a video on it. So I will put a card at the top of the screen. That way you can go ahead and click on that and check that video out. And down in the comments, make sure you let me know your thoughts on Give It To Me. And you know what? Also, just let me know your favorite Timbaland collabs in general. As always, thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, if you'd like to become a channel member, you can click the link in the description of this video. I will see you dolls very, very soon. I love you much. Bye-bye.